I often learn things here in a short conversation that would take me weeks, months, or years to gain that same experience on my own. This is amortized constant complexity. Uh, so we all know about runtime com complexity, right? That's easy, child's play. But what is amortized complexity? So we check the literature, right? But there's nothing about it in Ahu. There's nothing about it in Knuth. We find this really old paper by Robert Tarjan, but it's kind of hard to read. So fortunately, Corbin has a full chapter on it. So we're going to go with that. So Corbin discusses three different methods, and we're going to go with accounting because that's by far the coolest of the three. So what's accounting all about? Coins, it's about coins. So we use those coins to pay for computational steps, and the number of coins required is a measure for the complexity. So let's set up a vector and push some elements into it. So we push one, and we have to pay one coin for the copy. We push the second element, again, we have to pay one coin for the copy. Now, when we want to push another element, we notice that there's no room in our vector anymore. So we have to allocate a new buffer, and then we have to copy our elements over one by one, and each of those copies costs us one coin. Uh, eventually, we can insert our new element, we pay one more coin for that. So what's the worst case complexity of this? Yeah, it's linear, you guessed it, right. So it's linear in the number of elements in the vector. So what that means is, for the first element, we have a budget of three coins. We pay one coin for the copy, we throw the other two away. For the second element, we have a budget of four coins. We pay one coin for the copy, we throw the other away. For the third element now, we have a budget of five coins, and we need all of those coins to make the copy. So I know what you're, seeing, what you're thinking. That's a lot of wasted coins. What if, instead of throwing those coins away, we could save them, and then spend them uh, on subsequent operations. And that's exactly the idea of the accounting method. So the important restriction here is that our account can never go negative, right? We can only spend coins that we saved from earlier operations. And if we now look at pushback with this method, we notice something curiously, because now we can do all of the pushback operations with a constant budget of three coins. So when we insert the first element, we pay one coin for copying the element. Then one coin we put on the element that we just inserted. And the third coin we put on an element that was already in the vector before. We do the, th the same thing for the second element. And now when we come to the third element and we have to copy everything to a new buffer, we will notice that all of the existing elements in the vector already have a coin on them. So I can use those saved coins to pay for copying the existing elements over, and I use my three coins for this operation for inserting the new element. And that's amortized constant complexity. Hooray! We still have time, so let's do another example. <laughs> so uh, the uh, standard says that uh, the begin operation in the, uh, on a range has amortized constant complexity. How does that work? So let's say I have a vector with a lot of zeros in there, and then I have like one element that I'm really interested in. So I build a filter view um, that uh, filters out all of the zeros and gives me back my interesting element. Um, and you guessed it, the complexity of uh, obtaining that element is again linear. But the trick is that uh, the ranges do memoization, right? So what that means is for the first element, I need to spend a linear amount of time, but then it caches the result, so when I call begin again, I can get it in constant time. So now if I do the amortized analysis, like I start with my really big vector, and I will pay a million coins to get to the element where, yeah, that, that doesn't work, but accounting was stupid anyway, right? So let's do aggregate analysis instead. So unfortunate aggregate analysis uh, fails uh, when there's only a single call to begin. Um, and the same for the potential method. So I hear what you're saying. Wait, wait, wait. Like complexity is only about the asymptotic case. I don't care about what happens when there's only a single operation. But unfortunately, the asymptotic here refers to the length of the input for the amortized analysis to work. 
Um, the upper bone still has to hold for all possible sequences of operations, even the ones that only contain, uh, that only consist of a single operation. So unfortunately, these two are not the same, despite what the standard tells you. Thanks.